Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are live on Facebook and we are here joined today by program staff, alumni and parents from Orita. And I just want to welcome everyone. My name is Susie Mackler. I am the program manager at JumpSpark, which drives innovative teen programming out of the Jewish Federation of Greater Atlanta. And we are really excited that this year we've made a big move to step into providing more Israel opportunities for Jewish teens in Atlanta. And we are delighted that we were able to announce um, at the end of February, the Atlanta Israel Gap Year Scholarship, which is a $10,000 scholarship toward a gap year program in Israel. Um, and at a time really when some of us, are, our college experiences could be a virtual one, a gap year in Israel guarantees an international communal living and growth experience that really can't be beat and is a, an amazing opportunity. And we um, are fortunate that we have a diverse uh, opportunity of gap year programs that are part of this scholarship and we are fortunate to be able to feature each one of them. They focus on different areas in Israel, cities, religious affiliations, and there is a gap year experience for you. We're certain of that. Um, today we are joined by Orita. And Orita offers a comprehensive approach to Torah, combining depth of Torah thought with rigorous text study. We're joined with by Benny Friedman, who's the Dean of Orita, and we have two alumni from the program, Charlie Gottlieb and Micah Genton, and we have two parents of current students and alumni, Rebecca Zerman, who's in Teaneck, New Jersey, and Shauna Wolf, who is also in Bergenfield, New Jersey. So thank you. Welcome. And Benny, I'm going to tell, turn it over to you to get us started and tell us about Orita. Okay, sure. Thank you for hosting us. It's very exciting. Um, Orita is a one-year program uh, located in the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, we are currently uh, in the midst of our 13th year. We started 13 years ago. Um, we average 60 to 70 students a year. Boys who come, it's a boys program. Boys who come to Orita are looking for I would say two things. They want an intensive study program. It's an opportunity sort of to spend a year growing Jewishly, exploring, um, you know, sort of a, a deeper textual study, skills-based study, um, along with, oh, I apologize, along with, um, I guess, the balanced approach to Jewish philosophy. Uh, students come because they want to see what it's like to sort of be in an intense study environment with 60, 70 other boys. Um, but at the same time, they also want a deeper understanding of what Judaism is all about. Why do we do what we do? Um, you know, a lot of the existential questions that you just don't get a chance to deal with. Um, and kids who come to Orita uh, largely go to secular colleges and get to college much more prepared um, for that type of experience. Um, that's sort of the overall, the, the big picture of Orita. Uh, the rest is, uh, there's a lot more to be said. It's basically to spend a year living and learning in Jerusalem we do trips all over the country. Um, we have a very diverse student body and it's a very diverse faculty. And boys come because they want um, sort of, they want to get inspired. They want to get excited. Many of them are inspired. They want to grow. And that's really, I guess, the fundamental question for a boy coming to Reta. Are you looking to grow? It's a year to take off without tests, without papers, without homework, without deadlines, but it is an intensive study program. And a boy who isn't interested in studying, then it's not for him. Super. Well, well, thank you, Benny. Let's let's from there go into Charlie and then Micah. And um, Charlie, thank you so much for joining us. Charlie is a student at NYU, and he was on a ride to last year. And Charlie, just we'll do some Q and A later. But just tell us, you know, in, why did you choose a ride to? How was your experience there? You know, what what were some of the highlights? What's it? you know, share with us some of your experience. Absolutely, yeah. And you're asking questions that I could go on for hours and hours. I'm sure. <laughs> I think so I'll try to try to be a brief to give everyone else the, you know, all the other questions can be answered as well. Um, but in terms of uh, why I chose Orita, so I actually, throughout high school, I didn't really have so much of a conception of going on a gap year. Um, from my high school in Philadelphia, it wasn't, it wasn't uncommon, but it wasn't particularly common. Um, but especially yeshiva, like those that did uh, 
um, a gap year, I often uh, chose other amazing programs. Um, but so it was a little bit later in my year that I started kind of uh, wondering if maybe I should, you know, exactly what Rav Bini is talking about, try to figure out like, what is, what is going on? I've always, you know, loved my Judaism. I've always appreciated it. And I've always wanted to find something deeper. Um, and I got a lot of opportunities throughout my, you know, high school and, and before um, time, but, uh, but I wanted something that was, you know, on, on one level more intensive, um, again, in terms of understanding the tradition uh, on like a textual level, but also understanding it on an emotional and spiritual level in terms of self-connection. And that's what I found at Araita um, to really like check, not just check all those boxes, but to fulfill those kinds of like desires um, to really connect a little bit more to myself, to God, to, you know, my kind of Jewish community. Um, and in terms of what I learned, it's just so expansive. And, um, and uh, but I, I think that a lot of it boils down to the way in which I grew. And I think that growth as like a, an active uh, purpose, as Rabini kind of uh, alluded to, is, is, a, is an enormous uh, goal of a right to, to enrich its students, both in terms of religious practice um, and in terms of religious knowledge, and also in terms of in terms of character and in terms of bettering who you are and in terms of uh, improving yourself and how you relate to other people and how you know deeply you think. And so um, it's hard to speak about in a way that doesn't sound vague because it really is like so so real um, to me. I think I uh, I think I froze for a second. Um, but really at a right time, I connected to unbelievable friends uh, that I still keep into con uh, contact with like pretty regularly. I, uh, there was the staff, the rabbis there. Um, also, I, I still keep in contact very regularly, including Rav Bini and, and a few others on the staff. And to, to answer questions that are re religious in nature, uh, you know, ritual in nature, and also just in terms of thinking deeper about the world. So um, it really, it's, it's very impactful to how I see myself now versus who I was uh, before I got on that plane to Israel. So I'm, I'm just very, very grateful for my time at right so if I could sum it up. Great, thank you, Charlie. It's clear that you have had an amazing experience and we'll hear a little bit more about it. Um, Micah, thank you for joining us. Micah is, I believe, a freshman at Washington University in St. Louis, also was on a right to last year. So y'all were together. And yeah. um, so same thing, like tell us a little bit about why you chose it, you know, maybe why you chose a right to over another program and how your experience was and, um, yeah, um, so people have been telling me I should go to Araita since I was in around like sixth or seventh grade. Uh, seemed like it was always a good fit, even when I was younger. Um, I think one of the reasons for that is because, kind of like Charlie said, I've always been very focused on personal growth um, and kind of developing myself in the best way possible. Um, and I also came into Israel with a real desire to grow in my learning in a very serious way. Um, so kind of the combination of, on the one hand, wanting to be in a real yeshiva environment that was taking out things very seriously. Um, and on the other hand, a real focus on developing your character and becoming the best and most giving person that you can. That's kind of what uh, pushed me to want to go to Araita and it was definitely a very good fit. Um, I think one of the things I love about Araita is the variety of different shiurim that we have there. Um, so for example, there's a, there's a daily Gemara class every day, which is very foundational. And that kind of helps build your skills and helps build your textual like knowledge, I guess. Um, but in addition to that, in the afternoon, there are a variety of different classes like Tanakh and Rambam and Tefillah. And, and there's a lot of flexibility in kind of creating your own, your own uh, situation for really how you think you could grow best. Um, and I think that my experience at Araita really taught me that we say that every person has their own chelak in Torah. And like, and I really found that myself in that my ability to kind of learn what I wanted in certain times really helped me grow. Um, but also the whole experience, like, you know, the, the kids there were great and um, different hikes that we went on really made an impact on me. I, one of my favorite memories was uh, spending a, Sh a Shabbos at my rabbi's house in Jerusalem, being able to experience a different neighborhood that I never would have experienced otherwise. And it was really special with my whole sheer, like, you know, we were learning together every morning, but it's really a different experience to be able to spend the Shabbos at his house. Um, so, yeah, I had a very positive experience at Araita. I hope that was uh, sufficient. Yeah, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. And we'll come back and, we'll, and I'll, I want to hear some more details. But before that, um, we're thrilled to have Rebecca Zerman, who's had 
Um, she's a parent of more than one student who's been at Orita. So Rebecca, I'd love to hear from you, um, you know, from a parent perspective, your feelings about it, how the communication was, you know, why, again, for your family, you chose Orita. why? So I'd love to hear that. Sure. So um, we have uh, three boys, um, one daughter, but uh, so when, when my first child decided when he picked a right to, um, and at the time, um, there weren't a lot of, a lot of boys in his school that were choosing a right to, so he was really one of the few, and when it was our first child choosing um, an Israel program, we didn't really know a lot, um, and we just kind of went with what he wanted to, to do, and we went with a right to, and it was a really good choice for him. Um, I will say that he really could have gone to a lot of schools in Israel. Um, he was really good at studying and could have, like I said, picked really any school. I think what drew him to Araita at the time was he was looking for more than um, being able to study Gomorrah and he had really good um, study skills and he was looking for because he could have done that almost at any school he was really looking for something special and something um a little different i don't think i fully understood that at the time but he wanted something um a little more and he kind of figured that out i think before he went um and what a right to really gave to him was he wanted he was looking for something deeper i think um i heard both both charlie and and Micha uh, say this, is he was looking for a place where he could ask questions. He was looking to explore his Judaism at a higher level. And, and that's what he was looking for, in addition to being able to do the, the studying and the learning. Um, and he really felt that he could do that at Araita. And um, when my, my, my second um, son and my third son, we didn't say, hey, you need to go to Araita. We said, Araita should be on your list as the as a place to to explore. But we said you can you know you can look at any school, and it was just interesting that they ended up choosing Araita each time as the school that they wanted to go to. Um, and you know it's it's been a great choice for each each child. And my three boys are are very different. Um, I heard Rav Binney say it's a one year program. Yet um, my oldest son and my third son have gone for two years. My third son is, is there right now on Shana Bet. Um, and you know, it's been, it's been tough with COVID. Um, it's tough here in the States with COVID and kids that, that are in college too. So, you know, COVID is just a tough time in general. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, and my second son, he was actually very, I would say very disappointed that he d decided not to go back um, for a second year, and he actually found a um, about six weeks um, that he was able to go back to Araita um, in his first year of college to go back and do a little bit of, of learning because he missed being there so much. Um, the one, one last thing I just want to say is that one of the things that my boys really, I, I feel like they really, at least my two oldest ones, my third one's not done yet, but the two oldest ones, so another thing Rav Binney said is that most of the kids, they come back, they go to secular colleges. Um, my three boys all are going to Yeshiva University, um, but my oldest one, he works for the MBA. My second one is at Morgan Stanley doing investment banking. Um, they've all landed on their feet and are doing really well kind of in, you know, in the world. Um, but they're also very connected to their Judaism. And like my oldest one does a lot of outreach. So just to give um, a, a small example, he was, um, during Hanukkah, he was uh, on, a, on a work trip with the MBA and it was during Hanukkah. So he, he, um, he was lighting candles. He invited um, MBA players to come light Hanukkah candles with him and had ordered um, Suvganiot and they they enjoyed, um, you know, Hanukkah candle lighting and he, you know, shared the Hanukkah experience with them. Like that's what my son does, um, things like that. But he does it because 
this is what, these are the kinds of things that, that they got from Araita and, and this is kind of what's, I guess, part of them now and, and something that they are part of their life and something that they do as part of their life when these opportunities present. And the, these are the kinds of things that, you know, it's very hard to put into words, but they brought um, back with them as their experience that they got as part of Araita. So it's so hard as, as uh, Charlie said, to really express, um, you know, these are things they got that are, that are like in their soul and part of their experience coming out of Araita. And I just use that as an example because I, that's what I wanted for my boys is to, is to get that. It's not just the learning, it's bringing that, um, that's part of their being now. And I hope that that will last them their lifetime. And that's, that's why I'm so happy that, you know, they went to Araita and I'm so glad all three of them chose to be part of um, the Araita experience. Thank you. Wow. Um, I mean, you say it's hard to put into words, but I think you're doing a great job. I mean, I think your enthusiasm <laughs> and your, your pride really uh, is, I, I see it. And um, just as a side, I, my boys are a drop younger, they're teenagers, but they're going to want to connect with your son who works for the NBA. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so thank you. Thank you. And next we have Shauna Wolf. She's also in New Jersey, also the parents of, I think, two boys who have been at Orita. And so Shauna, welcome. Thank you. And again, just tell us a little bit about your experience from the parent side and why your family chose Orita and sort of then and, and after. Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm always um, glad to sing the praises of Orita. So um, to, to address, uh, I guess, your agenda. Um, my son, Kevin, who is turning 27 in a few weeks, graduated high school in 2012. And that was one of the earlier all right to years. Um, and he's was a bright boy and enthusiastic about life and learning. And similar to what Rebecca said, probably could have gone to a lot of different places. He's easygoing. He probably could have done well. And there was something about Araita, first of all, the presentation that we heard from Rob Vinny and what we heard about it. I think it's a multi-dimensional experience. They give the boys a great experience in Israel and love of the country and go meet people and go to different places um, for Shabbat. And they also have the spiritual connection and there's a wide variety of faculty in terms of, I think, ages and sort of their bent on Judaism and how they convey messages. And I don't just think it's the, um, the messages of learning, or even there's a lot of philosophy at Oraita. I think it's also the message of how to be a better person, how to be the best self, and how to go back to America or wherever you're, you end up and be an ambassador for the Oraita lessons, for the Oraita way to bring Judaism into the world, in your workplace, at your college, in your family, in your life. And I think both my boys who have gone there have done it in very different regards. Um, so my son, Kevin, ended up spending a second year at Oraita, which was a big sacrifice. He was going to University of Michigan Engineering. And at that point, things could have changed, but at that point, University of Michigan and Harvard are the only schools that do not allow you to take a second gap year. So he gave up his spot after a lot of deliberation, there was like a chart at school, what should Kevin do, et cetera. Um, he gave up his spot to go, um, to go another year. And um, I wasn't so on board with that decision um, until he explained his reasoning, which was that some of the boys who had spent a second year at Oraita, um, while he was there on his first year, had such a great impact on him and he wanted to pay it forward. So it's hard to say no to when your child 
is saying that, you know, not just for themselves, but to give back to the school and to future boys. And um, I have a letter that a boy who ended up going the following year sent to me the following summer after he did his year about the impact that Kevin had on his life. So all worth it. In the end, he got into University of Michigan again. He went to Michigan. He started a Thursday night program called Sheer and Beer, which um, brought a lot of people into, um, into the fold of Judaism. There are a lot of people who became more religious at Michigan because of Kevin. There are people that got married because they were at a different religious stage in their life through what he did at Michigan. And, you know, he went to their weddings of people that didn't come from religious backgrounds who met at Michigan, who were really nurtured through Kevin's, um, I guess, the impact that he had on, on campus. Um, and a lot, he really became such a campus leader, not just at Michigan, but he also, you know, did a program and, and tried to infuse some of the programs he did to have other people replicate that at their schools. He spoke at NYU and he spoke at other places um, during, during college. Um, and he now is working as a program manager, project manager, I'm sorry, in, um, in the computer field. And he and his wife are educators at MJE, Manhattan Jewish Experience which is a New York based organization that tries to bring 20, 20s and 30 year old single people to meet and to um, gain more knowledge of Judaism. And um, I give so much credit to Oraita for building that in Kevin. Um, six years later, my second son, I have a 15 year old son, we'll see where he ends up. But um, my other son, who's so dramatically different from Kevin, um, decided to go to a right to also. Um, uh, maybe I was like a little more biased than Re Rebecca presented herself, because I think a right to so great. And to me, none of the other schools compared as such a holistic program in giving the boys the spiritual, philosophical, technical, um, and just broad base appreciation of themselves, Judaism in Israel, like Oraita did, but he did end up choosing to go to Oraita. Um, he spent um, a second year at Oraita because he was planning to stay in Israel and join the army. And Rabini can attest to, it's the craziest story because we were doing wacko things last year, this exact week, but next week it's gonna be a year since my son um, joined the Israeli army. And I think Oraita gave him a lot of confidence and discipline, and he's in a very high level unit, which is unique to Americans. He's like the only American. Um, and I think just the whole philosophical, um, you know, pride in Israel, pride in yourself, you can do more, you can do better is what Oraita built on that I tried to instill in my children, but built on for Andrew in his year. And it's been incredible, like what his commanders have shared in very difficult circumstances, being a lone soldier during a pandemic, not having family in Israel, joining by himself because he joins during the pandemic, whatever, very, very long story, but, um, I give so much credit to Oraita for that. And, you know, he's still committed to like, when he has a day off, he tries to like log into an Oraita Shear. So he's really still committed to his learning and planning to, planning to stay in Israel. Wow, thank you so much, both of you. Such kind of different experiences, but similar in the pride and, and what you're uh, 
I don't want to call them boys, your, your adult sons really accomplished. You can call them boys. I know. <laughs> and, um, so thank I you. I think you should both come to a right and I'll take a year off. I know, really, it sounds <laughs> yeah. like it. It sounds like you could be the recruitment the director. Um, Charlie and Micah, I'd love to ask both of you a couple of questions. Um, I mean, tell, tell us a little bit, like what's a day in the life? You know, if, if, I, if I've got 24 hours and I'm there, Tell me a little bit about like what that looks like and how you spend your time. I guess I could go. Sure. Um, so I don't have all the times down perfectly because it's been a little while, but um, so you wake up, there's uh, davening in the morning. Um, after Let me ask a question. Are you living in a dorm? Yeah, so okay. the, the dorms are about a two minute walk down from the baby Josh. Uh, it's a pleasant walk in the morning, it's nice. Um, from the study hall yeah. from the study hall um so so we have uh at i think it's around 7 40 we have davening after that uh we have uh breakfast Orita has great breakfast uh really really great um <laughs> after that uh we go back into the study hall for our uh we study gemara for first we, we learn in a pair like everyone kind of gets split up um and you learn with, with another guy, you're uh, the rabbi for your shear kind of gives you like a certain stuff to learn and then you learn it with them. Um, and then after a couple hours of, of doing that, you talk to the rabbi, you talk to other people about what you're learning. Um, then your, your group kind of like convenes and you hear a class based on everything you were learning that day. Um, so that, that's kind of like the morning pretty much. Um, after that, we have lunch that's that's at about i think one o'clock we have lunch um and then there's like a two hour break where you can do what you want um then in the afternoon there are about three different slots for classes this is really where the there's the variety there's a bunch of different courses you could take you could learn about tanakh you could learn maimonides you could learn uh tefillah there's a lot of different things you can take during the afternoon and you kind of get three slots all right by david aaron has his like philosophy class right around then. Um, so that's the afternoon. And then, then we have a, a break for dinner and there's a little bit of an extended break. It's around an hour. Um, and then there's night Seder, which you, you go back into the Bay Midrash uh, and you learn again with a, with a partner for about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and then finally we dive in Marv at around 10 p.m. Um, but there's a lot of you know flexibility and and uh, different ways to construct your day somewhat. So that that was my experience. Okay, and Charlie, I mean, maybe you could also tell us about like in addition, do you have some free time? Do you learn your way around Jerusalem? Do you have some time to travel on the weekends? And kind, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, certainly. So, um, so Micah did a great job of talking about like what happens inside the Beit Midrash inside the study hall. And that was incredibly impactful for me, but in terms of uh, kind of what goes on outside. Um, so as, as he said, there, there are a few, a bunch of breaks uh, throughout the day and those are yours to do whatever you would like with it. So we're located in the old city, which is an unbelievable location. And if you were, ever find yourself on the right to roof, um, it is really something spectacular to see the hotel and just, you know, just like the presence of, you know, where you are, is, it really just takes you, uh, you know, takes, takes your breath away. Um, and so, but another uh, part of being in the old city is the convenience factor that it's a few minute walk to uh, the Jaffa gate, uh, which is kind of like the main direction to get into, let's say like greater Jerusalem. Um, and from there, you can get yourself on the light rail, you can go to um, you know, the, uh, the central station, you may not have th that much time during a, a break in the middle of the day, um, but, uh, but you can go on a walk. I would sometimes go on a run a lot to the uh, Tachana uh, Richona, which is this like beautiful path that's an old train track in Jerusalem. Um, and to, uh, the, but that's now like a walking running path and there are some shops and you can just kind of like see Israeli life happening. Um, and I found that just really wonderful. Um, and I would just listen to something in my ear and, or some, some guys go to the gym um, or, uh, or uh, you know, some you can just take a nap. You know, sometimes, as as Micah said, you know, there's a lot of learning throughout the day. You might be, you know, it's it's normal to be tired, or you can just hang out with friends. There's a lot 
Um, you know, I, I personally am not a particularly like a sporty or athletic type. Um, and going in, I was worried, oh, are they just, you know, only going to be playing sports? I'm going to left out. But I found that I, um, at every break, at every point, I was able to, you know, find something to do that was productive, that was enjoyable um, in terms of uh, our free time. And uh, so, yeah, so there's quite a lot to do with it. reading, napping, you know, whatever. Um, or some people even continue learning during the breaks, which is a really amazing thing to do that you work on throughout the year. And in terms of the, uh, the weekends, so each Shabbat uh, has kind of a different feel. Some of them you're with the yeshiva. Um, so everyone's together. Um, and usually one of the rabbis comes in and you have a Shabbat, um, you know, in the old city together, you, you daven together. The Araita davening is known to be particularly beautiful, especially Kabbalat Shabbat. Um, sometimes maybe we'll go outside, go on the roof that I mentioned. And so that, yeah, and Shabbat to get more time just with your friends um, to hear amazing words of Torah from your rabbi um, in a more, let's say like comfortable, uh, you know, I mean, it's always comfortable, but Shabbat has this kind of casual, this, uh, you know, warm feeling. Um, and of course have some cholent as uh, Rufini uh, always like. <laughs> and so the Shabbat with the yeshiva, I have uh, an unlimited amount of wonderful memories um, uh, from those. Um, but there are also several Shabbats that you can go out either because everyone goes out for Shabbos or some Shabbats or you can choose to stay in or to go out. Um, and that, uh, you know, you're free to do whatever you'd like. And um, they always make sure that you, you know, you're able to find some place. You don't have to worry if you don't have so many, you know, if you don't have family or many connections in Israel, you do not have to worry. You'll always find someone uh, or I would go with friends a lot to their family or to their family friends or whatever. Um, and to get that opportunity to explore Israel um, and also not only to explore Israel, but to do so not just as you know a tourist, but to do so as someone who's who's living there, and maybe you're staying at someone's house in in a different part of Jerusalem, in um, Renana, in Tel Aviv, in you know wherever you can you know make you know however far you can go on a Friday, um, you can stay in somebody's house and have a wonderful you know real Shabbos uh, at a you know a family's home, and those were also really really impactful, and uh, and sometimes maybe your rabbi from yeshiva will have his uh, class over for Shabbos, as Micah said. And so there's there's a lot of exploration possible. And not to mention the trips that we would go in, Rabini uh, led a few of them and always uh, imparted the uh, the history and the significance of where we're standing. Um, Rabini would always be really amazing, uh, do an amazing job at, at really letting you feel uh, where you are and not just kind of see it. So there's there's a lot of a lot to do outside of the Beit Midrash, I guess is how I would sum that up. Um, experientially and just growth oriented and it's a lot of fun <laughs> it's a lot of fun sounds like it it sounds yeah. wonderful and um Rebecca Shauna maybe one of you could speak about you know as a parent sort of how you felt about the safety of your kids being there you know it's kind of the first time they're leaving your house living kind of independently um and really far away and so how you felt about the safety and also you know, the communication from the program. Um, I'd love to hear about that. Um, sure. Um, so my boys were both chill about anything <laughs> that went on, you know, <laughs> if there was a crisis in the old city, if something came up. Um, so I, I, I try not to really worry. They were also, the school communicated as necessary. Um, if, if there was something, you know, a high alert situation in Israel, um, I wouldn't say they were like obsessive about communicating, but I never felt like I didn't know what was going on. Um, and I think one thing, I have so much to say, but I think that one thing that, um, Oraita is amazing about doing is saying you're in Israel for the year thanks to your parents and your family. So you have an obligation to come home a better person, to be respectful, even if you're taking on more in Judaism than your family had done. And just to be like a better person, a better son, a better brother, a better grandchild, um, and ultimately like a better husband and person of the world. Um, so in that vein, I think, well, this is my impression, uh, you know, that, that they really encouraged the boys to make sure that they like called and checked in, you know, at, at least before, you know, 
before Shabbos, like on Thursday or Friday. So I, I know my boys did that. Um, I mean, of course I wanted them to, but they they did that without without missing a beat. They really did. And I think that kind of uh, record is probably due to the emphasis on that Edoretta. Um, I mean, look, they can they continue to do that. They're you know they're they're not in school. They're good like that. But I think that it's um, it's the concept that uh, I think is one of the tendons of Oraita is hakara satov, which is like acknowledgement of the good and to be appreciative to your parents or those people that you, you should show appreciation to and be respectful of. And I think part of that is not having your parents wonder like. Where are you for Shabbos? Is everything okay? I haven't heard from you. It's been eleven days. <laughs> so, so that that didn't that didn't happen. So, um, I did feel it, like they were far away, and we don't have family in Israel. But I felt that I, I could call Oraita, and I have you know a few friends that like would check in on them, you know, if I needed them to, and I I I, I felt okay even though I did really feel like they were far away. Um, I, uh, I think the school tried to make itself a beacon of safety. And also the rabbis are very connected to the boys. So I think if a boy is having a particular struggle, I, I think they might not all be involved, but there are at least one or two people, you know, depending on the particular boy and the situation, who are who were on top of it and involved and you could contact if it was you know a specific thing it sounds like it it sounds like it's it's a really a group like, a, like there's a wonderful community there i'm really getting that feeling from from everyone um i mean rebecca i don't know if you want to add anything about you, you know how you felt about your kids safety about their communication um yeah, just a really quick thing, you know, for, for a family who maybe has never traveled to Israel and is, you know, thinking about sending their child on, on a program, I think you just have to get comfortable that Israel really is a safe place. And it's not, um, you know, there, there isn't a war, it's not a war zone at all. So for people just who haven't traveled there and don't have a feel for it, it you just have to get comfortable with that regardless of whatever school you, you know, you pick and, and are deciding whether to send your child to. So that kind of is separate from whether you, you send to a right to or, or any program. And I mean, you know, with, with WhatsApp and um, the phone plans that, it, that exist today, you know, to, to call um, the states, it, it's so easy now to communicate um, with your child that, you know, didn't exist. I mean, when I was a kid and I went to Israel, you know, we would have to put in the, uh, the the coins, and you had to keep keep pumping the phones um, with your coins and hope that you didn't run out of coins to to call to call home. It's not like that today, so it is really easy to 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 communicate um, with your child. And you know, the the one thing that I always said to my to my kids was like, if something happens, if there is, God forbid, you know, a terrorist attack of some sort and certainly with my older boys um, um, that were there when when um, when Kevin was there um, you know just let me know that something happened and that you're okay before I hear about it or read about it here just so I know um, you know so I'm not trying to trying to contact you to find out what's going on so that was always just our um, the way that we operated so I would hear about I would see a text um, from my child to say, yeah, something happened. Here's what happened, but I'm okay. We're okay here in, in yeshiva. And that, that was just what I needed to, to know that they were okay. We were always in constant um, communication. A lot of time it's just a quick text, like, how's it going? Everything good. And we would, you know, they're boys, so they don't always communicate so well. Um, but we would make sure once a week, we would always have a phone call at, at a minimum. Um, my son who's there now is a much, he's better at communicating. So we actually talk more, but with my older two, they weren't so great. So at least I got a once a week phone call was the minimum. Great. Okay. I thank you all so much. There's so much information here. I can feel the, um, 
the love of, for this program here. Um, Bimmy, is there anything else that you want to tell about the program? If people are watching this and they're interested, um, what's the application process to apply to the program? I mean, is there anything else before that, that we didn't cover that you want to make sure people know? Okay, sure. I'll just be quick also. Um, first of all, uh, there's so many questions and so much information that I could share that isn't, hasn't been brought up yet, which is fine. Um, so I've put my, uh, uh, I put the, the Arita website on the chat, uh, www.arita.org. Um, that's actually the easiest way to apply. There is a joint application, um, which basically means that you can hook into different programs with one application, um, although many other them may not be applicable for the scholarship. Um, and, you know, once you start an online application, you will automatically get contact from us and, you know, it'll be easy for you to ask any questions. The website also is a good source of information in lots of other areas. Um, there are videos that you can watch. I'm going to also add here um, my own personal information. This is my, um, this is my, uh, my email and my uh, WhatsApp number, my cell number. Um, I'm pretty good on WhatsApp. Um, email might take me a day or two sometimes. But reach out, you know, if, you, if you're watching this and you see another question that you didn't think of and you wanna be in touch, it'd be a pleasure. Um, even if my advice ends up being you're better off in another program. <laughs> Last thing I would add is boys coming to this program are, are, are really looking for, they're looking for a study oriented opportunity to take a journey. They want to get a deeper understanding of Judaism. Um, they're, they're basically a committed, motivated bunch. You know, sometimes a boy finishes high school and he's just, he's done. He's had it, he's toasted, he wants a break. You know, he wants to go to Europe, but his parent won't, won't let him, you know, sort of travel on his own. There are great programs for a student like that that are much more travel oriented. We do sort of, you know, a few overnight intense programs. In fact, a lot of our boys are just getting back tonight from Yam Liam, which is this hike from the Mediterranean to this Sea of Galilee. It's a 40 hike. They had a fantastic time. Um, there are boys now working in a kibbutz, you know, during their break. Um, we go up to the Golan, we go to Tzfat, we go to the Galil, we go down to the Negev. There are many other sort of aspects of this program, but the core of it is that you're looking to study, develop your skills and get a deeper understanding of, of sort of what Judaism is all about and, and to fall in love with Jewish study and Jewish text. And for a boy who isn't interested in doing that, then this would definitely be the wrong program. But I'm always open to having the conversation, you know, maybe I'll be able to steer you in the right way, even if that's not what you're looking for, that's fine too. And uh, if I don't get a chance afterwards, I just want to thank all of you, both for availing us of this opportunity and for coming. I know how precious time is, especially before Pesach. Uh, this has actually been enlightening for me to hear this sort of through your eyes. This is interesting to me. I'm glad, you know, I'm going to send you all checks in the mail later, you know, but uh, really, thank you very much. It's been great. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Benny and Charlie and Micah and Sean and Rebecca. It's great to hear the different perspectives. And um, to everyone out there, if you are interested and still, we still, our, our scholarship application is open through March 31st and you can find all the information on our website. You can reach out to me. I can put you in touch with Benny if you're interested in Norita. And, um, and I just thank you everyone for joining us today and thank everyone on the call, our panelists for their time. And everyone have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful Pesach. Same to you. Yeah.